G'day guys, well today we're installing a new stereo into our Jayco Sterling Caravan. Uh, we decided the old one from 2009 wasn't cutting the mustard anymore, didn't have the connectivity or the functionality that the new stereos do. So we've decided on the Fusion uh, unit, um, has all that Bluetooth uh, connectivity, um, you control it with your phone, all that sort of jazzy stuff. Um, also we're going to be changing the external speakers out here. Now we're going to be taking you through a step-by-step -step process on how to do it. It's so super simple and easy to do, um, so just follow along. Cool. All right, guys, let's just take a quick look at the uh, the unit. So the unit's a, uh, a Fusion MS-RA70 unit. Now, it's a marine entertainment system, right? So it is splash-proof, um, obviously not waterproof, but splash-resistant. Now, there's a few things that, that drew me towards this unit. So one obviously has Bluetooth, has AM, FM radio uh, designed for iPhone, iPod, all that sort of good gear. Um, but the other two things that really drew me to this uh, system is that it has, um, it's called Fusion Link. So Fusion Link is an app that you download on your phone and then you can control your whole unit from your phone. So if you're sitting at the campfire, underneath the awning, it doesn't matter where you are, you can actually control this uh, head unit. The other part is that it actually has two zones. So you can set up an internal and external zone um, so that you know, you're not having the speakers on uh, inside when you're outside and, and vice versa. All right, so let's just take a look at the back of the unit. Now, don't get daunted by the amount of wires that are coming out the back. Uh, there's nothing to be concerned about. This is gonna be a super simple, easy install. So basically, all we're gonna be using is the red and the black wire, so connecting them up to the existing power supply that's already there for the, the head unit. Uh, and then we're just gonna be taking these eight wires here uh, and then connecting them up to our speakers. So the trickiest part is identifying which speaker goes to which area. Um, that's probably about the hardest part. The other functionality of this uh, head unit is that you can connect up to amps and subs and all that sort of good gear. I'm not going to be doing that, I just don't need to. Uh, it does have your antenna port uh, and also a uh, USB out the back here as well. Alright, these are the speakers. So any good sound system needs good speakers, right? So these are the Fusion MS-EL602 uh, external speakers. So these can be mounted on the outside of the caravan. They are marine grade uh, and sort of splash resistant. So. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that yes, these are a six inch speaker, but they actually just measure just over seven inches in width. Now the original ones that are on the, uh, on the wall here actually measure six inches in full diameter. So these are another full inch bigger. So it caught me out, so, which means that we're gonna have to modify the hole that these uh, speakers sit in. So um, wasn't expecting that, but anyway, it is what it is. So with these speakers, 41 millimeters in depth. So they uh, make for a nice shallow mounting system. Um, and here's your um, foam seal. Um, so when you actually mount it to the wall, um, it creates a nice compression seal. But what we'll also be doing is when we actually fit these and screw these in, so they do come with the screws, um, we're gonna be putting a nice bead of silicon all the way around that speaker so we don't get any water inside the wall. All right, so here's the, uh, the original head unit. So this is from 2009. Um, to be honest, it's never played good music. Obviously it's got to do with a lot to do with the speakers as well. So one thing I have measured up and I will have to change, um, I was originally gonna fit the uh, single din head unit in the same spot. However, Jayco in their wisdom have made the hole slightly bigger than a single din head unit. And then once the, uh, the new one goes in, you actually be able to see the, the, the sides a bit here. So not ideal. However, where there is a will, there is a way. So what we'll be doing is we're gonna cut a new single din head unit above here. And then in this blank hole here, um, we can put a single DIN pocket. So you can pick them up from uh, Super Cheap Auto or you know any sort of good reputable sort of automotive store uh, and then sort of slide them in. They're about 20 bucks. Um, and it's actually gonna create a nice little nook anyway. So place to sort of you know put your phone, put your trinkets, all that sort of stuff. So uh, that's what we'll be doing. All right, first part of the job is going to be moving these external speakers. Now, grab your cordless drill and also a trim removal tool. Now this is just a plastic trim removal tool. Um, these speakers are gonna be pretty well siliconed in. Um, and if you use anything metal, you're probably gonna damage your wall. So being plastic, it's not gonna do any damage. And just like that, the speaker comes out. So you can see all the silicon that they've put in here, um, which is really good job by Jayco. Um, so we'll just remove that and Yes, 25 watts of massive power. So the new 150 watt speakers are gonna be absolutely insane. So now we've removed the speaker, pull out the, uh, the mounting template uh, for the speaker that comes in the box, 
and we can slide that over the top where we're going to fit the speaker. Now, as you can see, there's, there's two problems here, right? Is that we've got to watch out for the top trim um, where the pop top comes down and also the light. The light's going to be in the way. So thank you, Jayco, uh, for putting the light so close to the speaker. Now, ideally, what we want to do is get a hole saw and hole saw that out. Now, there is a trick up my sleeve, which I'm going to show you on how to do. And if you don't have a hole saw, you're probably going to be able to resort to a jigsaw, but jigsaws are going to be pretty messy. Anyway, we'll remove this light uh, and then we'll uh, mount up the template and see how it looks from there. All right, so as you can see, we've removed the light now. We'll get our template and we'll slide that down. So, I think we're gonna be pretty lucky. We should still be able to cover these holes up that Jacob have made um, to put in that light. So what we'll do is we'll make our little jig up now for our hole saw, um, and then we can cut this hole out. All right, now we're ready to drill the hole. Now, because we have a large hole here and the hole saw has no place to be guided, um, what I've done is I've made this little template up. So this is the same size hole that we're gonna be using uh, to drill out. Uh, and what I've done on the back, I've just used some double-sided tape. What this will do, this will actually provide the guide um, for the hole saw to drill. Um, so all we need to do is just um, line this up. So this is the top and that's the top of the speaker as well. So. What we do is we just drop it down a few millimeters from the top, line that up, give that a good push. That's on there, nice and solid. And then we just get our, our drill. Now preferably, probably not a battery drill is not ideal uh, because of the, the size of the actual um, uh, hole that you need. Now this is a 127 millimeter hole saw. Um, so we'll get into it. And just like that, we have our hole. All right, so prior to installing the, uh, the speaker, what you wanna do is make sure you give the hole here a nice good clean, um, something that will uh, remove any grease or, and dirt and stuff, um, just so that you're gonna give the, uh, the silicon a nice strong bond between the speaker and the wall. All right, so now it's just a matter of fitting the speaker, making sure you've got the foam seal in place. Um, just connect up the, uh, the speaker wires. So they just push on to connect, like so. Push that back into the cavity. Line up that foam seal. Push that there in place. Now I've just got to grab, grab a bit of tape just to hold that in place while I get the uh, screws. Right, so now onto the head unit. So um, what I've already gone ahead and done is stuck in, so there's little tools that you sort of slide down the side, uh, and then that disconnects uh, the head unit from the actual frame, uh, and then the actual main unit just slides out. So I actually wasn't able to push it back in after I did that uh, because of the bird nest of wires. So I don't know how JK got them uh, uh, in, but anyway, so this unravels the bird nest of wires. So don't be overwhelmed, it's not complicated, all right? So these are just some RCA leads. So the RCA leads go down to the back of the TV. You've got your antenna wire, which goes obviously to the roof. Uh, and then you've got your main harness here for the Pioneer unit. So the head unit is out, put that down to the side here. Uh, and then you've got two main wires. So the two main wires that we need to consider, obviously the yellow one here, that's uh, active power. So you're normally your red, and then your black is your earth. So Obviously power has been disconnected. 
Um, so what we need to do is pull this out a little bit more and then we'll just simply cut these off like so like that and then now all we've got left is the speaker wires so whenever I reconnect wires I always like to start off with a fresh connection so I'll do exactly the same with the speaker wires so we'll just cut these speaker wires harness off so as I said before what we're going to be doing is we're going to be mounting the unit uh, fusion unit up here um, so I've got to remove this little tray here uh, that the head unit sat in and then cut in a hole here for the uh, for the fusion one so we'll get on to that all right so I've marked out where the uh, fusion stereo is going to go uh, using the template that they supply um, so basically you just trace around that uh, and then that will leave that bit out there so all I need to do is draw a couple of holes in each corner, get the jigsaw out, cut that out, uh, and then we should be good to go. All right, so all I've done is connected up all the wires together. So basically the corresponding um, speaker wires to the corresponding connections. Um, and I've just used the same connectors that J-Code used. So basically you just twist the wires together uh, and then um, put the plastic cap on and screw it on and that's a firm uh, connection. Uh, and then same thing with the, uh, the power. So the uh, positive and negative. Now tip for young players is make sure you use a multimeter and, and check. So I initially thought the power was the white cable. Uh, the actual power is the earth and the black is the, is the positive. So um, just make sure you check your power connections. So that's all good to go. So now it's just a matter of um, simply plugging this in uh, and that and the antenna and we're good to go. These other three wires aren't, aren't used. So one's for an amplifier, one's for a tele mute uh, trigger and the other one is a dim function. So I won't be using any of that. If you're using like on a boat or something, you'd probably use that sort of function, but it's just a matter of uh, sliding the head unit in and testing it. All right, so you're probably wondering how we're gonna finish this off. Um, it's quite simple. Because uh, this is a, a DIN size spot, um, they actually make what's called a DIN pocket. So basically the DIN pocket fits in like that and finishes the space off nicely. It's a good spot for your mobile phone or any sort of knickknacks. All right, so radio stations. So um, pretty simple. Uh, you can just hit the auto button and all tune and get to the next radio station if that's what you want. Um, go backwards works exactly the same like a normal radio. Um, if you wanted to um, change between radio and Bluetooth, you can change simply by just going BT, hitting the big button, and then that changes it to Bluetooth. So obviously we've got Hypnotize, the notorious B-I-G, great song by the way. Um, if we want to go back, we can go to AM if we wanted to, um, but I don't know if anyone listens to AM radio. Um, or we can go to auxiliary. So if we had an auxiliary that was plugged in, um, we could then um, run that auxiliary. All right, so one great feature that I love about this unit is the ability to independently uh, change the volume of each zone. So to do that, you just simply push the big button and then you can see on the side, the actual zone, how it's sort of darker on the right hand side, which is indicating that that's the one we're using. If I wanted to change that, I just push it again. And that in indicates two. So they you can see that they both go up and down at the same time. If I wanted to just change to the one zone, I can change up and down. Um, so I reckon that's an absolutely fantastic feature. I didn't have that on the previous radio. Uh, I just had one, well I had two zones, uh, left and right channel. However, I couldn't independently operate the actual volume. So that's given me a heap of flexibility if I wanted a little bit of sound in here and all the sound outside. That is absolutely fantastic. All right, well, there you have it, guys. Uh, Fusion uh, stereo all installed in the caravan. I reckon it's an absolute cracking addition. 
Um, we didn't use the radio a lot before because it would just really make really poor quality sound. Uh, as you heard before, the sound quality is pretty bloody good. Um, I'll definitely look at in, uh, updating the, uh, the speakers inside the caravan as well. I reckon uh, putting those other two in is gonna make an absolute world of difference. So as I've already previously said, a couple of features I really love are the ability to change zones. So you know I can change the inside or the outside um, independently. Um, or I can just operate the single zone altogether. I reckon that's absolutely fantastic. One other thing I really love is the crystal clear screen. Like the, it's very easy to see uh, the screen, and also the big buttons. It makes it so simple and easy to use. You know, a lot of these head units, um, especially like the old one, there was lots of buttons on there. Um, and to be honest, a lot of them I didn't even know what they what they did. Whereas this is so simple and easy to use. I love the ability that I can actually then go away from the caravan and still operate the complete radio function. So, you know, if we, you know, someone says the radio music's too loud, I can turn it down. Someone wants the music up higher because they want to dance or whatever, we can turn that up. So having that ability is absolutely gold. Well, if you've made it this far, I really appreciate it. Uh, I know it has been a bit of a lengthy install vid, but I wanted to cover everything off in detail so that you can do it yourself. Now, um, if you've got any questions or comments, chuck them down below. I will answer them uh, what I can. And uh, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers, guys.